Welcome to the Adam Roosevelt Show, where we provide short coverage and highlights on foreign affairs and U.S. political topics, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Let's dive into episode five. Hand-picked U.S. news topic for this Friday. The U.S. is on the path to recession. A recently respected economist Mark Zandi said the odds of a recession within the United States, we are within a two-year window there's a 35% chance that the United States will go through a recession. In addition, the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates. The focus here from the U.S. government perspective is to focus on its U.S. monetary policy to ensure that it is prepared to adjust to the global inflation. Uh, The Fed and the central bank are playing catch up. Economists who have been looking at this particular issue, expect the Open Market Committee to raise its benchmark by 50 basis points and any suggestion towards 75 points would sure to have an impact on the community and upset the community. A half point Fed rate hike on the table will will occur May and June. And as you all know, from the global inflation perspective, Ukraine, Russia has played a tremendous role in the commodity Uh, business and contributed in some way, shape, or form to higher consumer costs. COVID-19 through this pandemic has contributed tremendously as well and has impacted our supply chain, putting a tremendous amount of constraints uh, globally on our ability to move supplies, have access to supplies. And then in addition to the contributing factors, our labor market, and we're now looking at assessing the food security issues that we have due to the unfortunate conflict that we're all very aware of. Now, in the investor community as well, we're focusing on what's happening in the private equity and venture capital space, and they have now uh, adjusted their positions to build up their cash position to make sure they can absorb uh, the risk due to the volatility of the market. So we're looking at not just U.S. monetary policy, but how U.S. monetary policy impacts our investor community in terms of private equity and venture capital uh, funds. And these fund managers are generally used to betting on high performing markets, getting 3x, 5x, or 10x returns. But now that we're in this particular time frame of pandemics, conflicts in geopolitics, commodity issues, global inflation, uh, private equity, venture capital fund managers are going to have to get smarter and more focused on risk reduction. Uh, So the U.S. overall, coming back to the monetary policy perspective, is going to have to make sure that we get our ducks in a row fairly quickly and look at innovative strategies there uh, as the monetary policy has impacts on other industries that impact us in a variety of different ways. Now, let's kind of shake up the topic here. We'll switch gears. Uh, just recently, in terms of commercial space flight, the first all private astronaut crew uh, flew aboard the International Space Station and just this last Monday splashed down with over 5,000 pounds of science, landing somewhere off the coast of Florida, wrapping up a two week mission. And SpaceX Falcon 9 was responsible for getting them there uh, and launching that crew um, to the International Space Station. Just so you all know, these tickets are going for 50 to 60 million uh, per seat in terms of this new industry uh, space flight, in terms of space tourism. Uh, And this will be a very interesting industry uh, as it attracts ultra high net worth individuals. And at some later point in time, we will see the middle class community and the ability to provide affordable ticket and passage to uh, certain locations. Last thing on this topic, we'll say there's been some national security concerns in terms of space and protecting assets in space and comm systems and critical infrastructure, but we'll save that for another day. Let's jump into the hot topic of NATO prep. We covered this already this week in terms of the Secretary of Defense and as well as the Secretary of State going down to Kiev. There was also a follow-on meeting in terms of NATO prep that was being hosted in Ramstein Air Force Base. 
where Secretary General Austin, formerly general, went out to Ramstein base to put together a coalition of leaders, particularly for uh, defense of Ukraine and planning of asset delivery, accountability, more weapon supplies and getting them more prepared to fight. That also included training 20 howitzer battalions and a few more other commitments. And just recently, the Pentagon spokesman cited depravity and actions from Russia. We're following these particular stories. Resources are, however, running low in the Ukraine as government urges civilians to use public transportation so that the military has fuel. But the latest updates here is that NATO has been preparing for massive military exercises as Russia continues the invasion of the Ukraine. Um, again, we, we know that battalions are being trained, but in particularly in the NATO region, tens of thousands of troops from NATO and European Union are gearing up for a series of military exercises that the UK has called one of the largest shared deployments since the Cold War. Fox News has also stated that these exercises are backed by all type of different military uh, toys from aircraft tanks, artillery, armored assault vehicles, and this will take place in Finland and Poland, North Macedonia, and along the Estonian-Latvian border. Uh, will include, obviously, as you know, all known all know NATO troops, and then the Joint Expeditionary Force, um, which includes nine NATO members, Finland and Sweden, which you all seen the recent recent activity surrounding Finland and Sweden wanting to join NATO. Uh, and there had been some communication from the Kremlin in regards to activities that would be repercussions should should these nations join NATO. Uh, so we're keeping an, a, clo- a close eye on that. Now, as we transition to our last story of the day, Netflix um, analysts are saying that this is the least performing stock in the S&P 500 today, uh, plummeted more than 26 percent during the pre-market trading period on April the 20th. Uh, so that's unfortunate, but we know, as we have studied in previous past of the stories such as Blockbuster, some analysts are saying that Netflix is on the track to repeat history in terms of what happened to Blockbuster, and now other competitors uh, out there are continuing to be innovative in their pricing strategies and just trying to avoid the political, the political pulls and stories of impacts there. Uh, But that closes us out for Friday. And make sure you stay tuned with us Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Subscribe subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Instagram. Welcome to Episode 5. Welcome to the Adam Roosevelt Show, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you.